What's going on everybody, Doc from Average Gamer guys, back yet again, more Halo Wars 2 action. So jumping into some solo Terminus firefight, I'm going to give some strategies to success, as well as really provide a, a pretty total achievement guide for this game mode. So with Awakening the Nightmare, we get about 37 new achievements, almost half, sitting right about 15 of those achievements are for Terminus Firefight. So really enjoying this mode. Uh, in this video, we'll talk through the strategies. We'll talk through how I was able to knock out just about all of them. I was able to get 13 achievements uh, in this playthrough alone. Uh, how, how you can do that. Uh, and then just again, good strategies for success if you're running solo or just running in general. Um, so like I said, 13 total achievements. I'll read through the list here real quick. Um, but as you're seeing me right now, the biggest portion uh, to get you set up at the beginning, I'm playing a Sergeant Johnson, um, and he has the ability, his top tier leader power allows him to build uh, bases as well as build barricades for free. So that's a big, big bonus to him um, and really helps with knocking out a few of the achievements related to Terminus Firefight. So definitely recommend trying this out with him. Um, you can set it up a little bit better than I did. You can set yourself up. You can actually modify the supplies as well as the power. You can jack those numbers up just like you can in a multiplayer game. Um, so go ahead, feel free to do that. That. Beyond that, you're just really playing this. Uh, I did run through this on easy as well, uh, just to make the, the waves a little less impacting, uh, especially initial in the game, because the biggest thing that you're going to need to do is to be able to expand and expand quickly. Um, so with the total achievements, with all the achievements that we got for this one, I'll read through the list. We've got Outflood the Flood, which is to build a mini base on all slots and have hold that mini base at the same time, which is probably one of the more difficult ones to do. Um, you get Kaching for destroying 20 bonus drops. Those are relatively easy. One drops every round, so as long as you're just paying attention and moving units around, no problem getting that one. Um, high maintenance is to build 50 barricades in one game. Turret farmer, build 50 turrets in one game. Walled in is to have a wall built on every slot at the same time. So that one, again, is one of the other more difficult ones uh, that you'll come across. Survivor is to finish wave five without building any other units. You can definitely do that on easy. Literally just focus on building turrets and you should be fine, especially right around the terminus. Um, it will take damage, so that is one achievement that you'll have to work on separately, but um, easy to do without, uh, easy to survive without having to build anybody else. And then you have Terminus Defender, Tactician, Teamwork, and MVP, which is 500,000, a million, two million, and five million score, respectively. Um, and that's total points. So again, you can definitely do this on solo. Um, I think I needed to make it to right around wave 40 on easy uh, to get there, uh, to get to the five million, but definitely doable. Um, and then you have Garrison, Barricade, and Fortress, which is to finish waves 10, 20, and 30, respectively. So again, a lot of achievements, a lot of capability to knock out in this first playthrough. Um, and, and really the tip here for me, um, if, if you're just looking for a general tip or you don't have the time to spend for the rest of this video and just kind of watch what I'm doing, uh, is just expand. Uh, the key is that you're going to need to take the mini bases. The mini bases give you the access to the additional turrets. Um, and from there, you can really work barricades and turrets at the same time. Some important notes about AI. The AI will always choose the easiest path to go through. Um, so if you see, uh, you know, the minimap does a great job. It, it has that dotted line that shows you where the enemies are coming from. You can actually kind of route the enemies the specific way that you want them which is pretty nice, um, based on how you build the barricades. Now you're gonna see me, I do kind of screw this up just a little bit, you're gonna see me initially build a lot of the laser barricades. Um, I've come to find that I actually do not like those and don't recommend them. I recommend building uh, just the standard fortified barricades, uh, kind of like the iron fence, because those you can upgrade. And you can actually upgrade them three tiers, with the final tier being either heavy amounts of damage that it can take, you can garrison soldiers in them like a bunker, or it can be constantly regenerating. Now, I would stem away from the constantly regenerating barricades just because it seems like, as we've seen in other instances, sometimes the barricades will just con constantly regen but won't actually gain any health. So that seems like it might be a potential bug or it might just been something I was running into uh, during this playthrough. 
Um, but the fortified barricades are absolutely brutal. They have a ton of health and especially on easy a lot of things aren't going to be able to get through them. The other nice thing is with the actual barricades themselves unlike the lasers, lasers the enemies will run through uh, and if you get some of the faster enemies they'll push through it, they'll knock that laser down, it will regenerate which is cool um, and it won't actually take any damage so it's a good way to just keep the barricade there. Uh, but the enemies will just run through and then they'll move to your base. Now you'll see with the mini bases um, again, it's allowing you to build on those turret slots. If you end up losing that mini base, all of those turrets and those barricades will be lost as well. So the other biggest tip I have for you, if you're especially trying to knock out the toughest, in my opinion, of the two achievements, which is to hold the mini base on each slot and to have a barricade built on each location. If you're attempting to do that, my other biggest tip for you is to always try to build up and fortify and get the opposite direction from where the enemy is coming from built first. So for instance, you can see on this mini map right here, and I know we're speeding through and I'm just going quick with everything, and you're just seeing me build barricades and build units uh, and just try to get defenses a little bit set at each location. You can see that the enemy is really coming from the left hand side of the map based on the pathing. So the focus for you like I'm doing right here is to focus on the right hand side, get it all built up, get it all keyed up, get everything building at the same time. You're going to see the barricade achievement actually pop right here for me because I was able to do that. Focus on the opposite side of wherever the enemy is coming from. Now sometimes they're going to path from both sides so you can kind of split the map in quadrants. You can do the left and the right as well as the top and the bottom. Um, and that's going to be your biggest tip for success because what's going to end up happening is your barricades and your turrets, especially on easy and especially at some of the earlier waves, are going to be able to sustain the damage from the enemies. Your turrets really by themselves should take care of uh, everything. And then by doing that, what it's going to allow you to do is then build the other side and you should find that you'll get to a point probably around level 20 to 25 where you're actually pretty well set where everything's pretty much going to maintain if you upgrade your turrets if you upgrade your barricades everything should basically be able to survive a couple of waves by itself and if you've split it up like that and focused on the areas where the enemies aren't coming from uh, then you'll find that you'll have success just keeping it all up. That actually was one of my tips for longevity success as well if you're just trying to go to high rounds uh, is to just try to get everything set especially the turrets. Turrets are hugely important in my opinion even more so than the barricades um, although the barricades do keep your turrets alive longer. Um, if you can get all that stuff set uh, I definitely focus more on building barricades and turrets than I did anything else to include units. Um, now definitely later into the rounds you're going to need some small forces that you can move. I definitely recommend the air uh, for the majority of this although it is good to have some anti-air units as well. Uh, I would say the majority of my forces ended up being hornets and wolverines. Um, I would kind of split on the mini bases because especially with Sergeant Johnson uh, you get to that top tier leader power you're not spending anything to at least build the barricades originally uh, you save yourself a ton of resources that you can build up um, and I would definitely recommend with the other mini bases that maybe you throw uh, especially on the three slots you, th you throw a power or uh, a supply generator and then you throw uh, an air pad and an armory and that's going to allow you to create both units make essentially s small mini kill squads that you can keep in each area um, and you're going to see that the enemies obviously are going to spawn from a central point so it's pretty easy to move forces pretty easy to get people in place um, and have small kind of reactive forces at each location and again um, they do a pretty good job uh, especially you know from the mid ranges uh, of of the waves of kind of giving you one side and then another side typically they don't hit you at all sides at once which is nice um, because you know if one side takes some damage and you lose some barricades and some turrets the next wave that comes in or the next couple waves that come in will hopefully come in from a different location giving you some time uh, to be able to kind of build up Right here you're seeing I'm realizing my mistake uh, and I'm actually breaking down those electric turrets or barricades and building uh, just the standard fortifiable ones and again the, the health on them is absolutely awesome uh, especially the top tier ones you can see a little bit of health there how huge the health bar is um, so that's really my basic strategy Wolverines Hornets was my what was my base force um, and just in the early rounds as much as you can you gotta try to get things set 
The only reason I would shy away from Sergeant Johnson, and I actually kind of like uh, Pavium in this uh, instance, is not a whole lot of great leader powers for Sergeant Johnson to be able to use as far as damage. He does have the Siege turret, which is pretty good. EMP Macplast doesn't do enough damage, in my opinion. Siege turret is pretty nice. Um, but the fact that he can just build all of that stuff, turrets at a discount, uh, and all of your barricades for free is really, really crucial and really awesome. Now, obviously, for the barricades, you do still have to pay for the upgrade, so that's important to note as well. But again, with this strategy, really, as you guys can see, and I know I'm really just kind of blazing through the gameplay, but you get the general sense. Build up your supplies at first. Get your supplies rolling. Don't worry about building really any units until probably around wave 10. Um, because you will get reinforcements at wave 5 of additional units. Focus primarily just on turrets. Um, with the turrets specifically as well, um, especially in a 4 turret slot, I would typically build 2 anti-infantry, 1 anti-vehicle, and 1 anti-air. It seemed like that was a pretty good set uh, because a lot of what you're going to face is going to be infantry focused. Uh, it'll obviously depend specific to each wave. Um, but it seemed like that worked out the best where those maintained and they were able to deal with just about everything. And like I said, build the fences and then upgrade them to fortified barricades and you'll have a lot of success. I did throw in a couple of regen ones from here and there just to test them out. They are pretty good as well. And they'll actually have an AOE healing so they can heal your units that are by them. The one important note to uh, thing to note as well in firefight mode is... Uh, the electrical barricades, your units can actually roll through. The fortified barricades, they cannot, um, and which is why I kind of focused on uh, having a mostly air force uh, specific to Hornets while also just having the anti-air there because that is what waves that can kind of bypass and make to the terminus pretty quickly. Um, so it's kind of important to note, but again, if you're holding each of the mini base slots, which I definitely recommend you should, and that's going to honestly kind of help with your longevity, you shouldn't have too many problems getting the forces where you need or having to move them a whole lot. Interestingly enough, also kind of a bonus to Sergeant Johnson is he actually does have the Pelican uh, drop or move as well. Um, so if you do need to get a large portion of your ground force from one area to another, you're going to be able to do so using that ability. Um, I will tell you making it up into wave 60, I was able to get just about, I think I just hit all of Sergeant Johnson's leader points uh, and every single thing. So definitely uh, not going to have too much of an issue there. But definitely your biggest uh, push is to try to get all the way up uh, to his top tier leader power first that allows you to build the barricades for free because you're going to see once you start getting up into the 40s and 50s the forces will actually roll through they're pretty big they're going to do a good amount of damage this is the part where you really got to focus on obviously building units uh, and playing defensive and you can see right here uh, i kind of ran into the issue of units not being able to move through my barricades um, Again, so having the Air Force uh, and having mostly Hornets there is going to be the best way to do that. Now, uh, I will say another just kind of small tip. You see I've got siege turrets on my main base. I would definitely recommend putting those on all four corners. You'd be very surprised how far the siege turrets can actually shoot. And I think that is one of the bonuses that the UNSC has on this side, especially for firefight, because those siege turrets will do a ton of damage, and they can really range a good portion of the map. Um, so they're really just providing additional damage outside of whatever you would normally build. Uh, because honestly, the, the turrets on the front base, at no point is any enemy actually going to focus on your base. They'll really leave it alone. So you could leave those turret spots pretty much completely empty. Um, uh, however, I definitely recommend building them and making them uh, long-range turrets. You could make the front two anti-air because, again, uh, the air pathing won't follow uh, really the normal path. They'll just kind of fly wherever they need to. Uh, you do have the six turrets around the terminus as well. I recommend splitting those up. Make the back two or the topmost two anti-air uh, and then split one and one on each of the left and right-hand sides. I think that uh, was a good amount of success for me. Uh, because the the enemy does a pretty good job of actually moving around the terminus. Uh, it will move from from spire to spire. It won't typically just sit at one. Uh, so having some variety in those turrets is usually pretty good. And you can see some of the some of the air, enemy air units just flying over the base as well. So maybe having a few of those as anti air wasn't a bad idea either. Um, and that's really it. Like I said, uh, I definitely want to continue to work through this, but 13 total achievements running it on easy is a really, really solid run. Um, I'm really, really enjoying 
this game mode. I think this, I, I really wish actually that this was one of the first ones that would have uh, been put in, to be honest with you, because it's it's a ton of fun. There's a lot of strategies uh, to implement. Me and Sloth are definitely going to jump in this and, and have some uh, 2v2 co-op strategies for you as well uh, to try to see how those work. I definitely am really liking Sergeant Johnson. We need to do, and, and we will do for you in the near future, kind of a leader breakdown on who are some of the best and who are some of the worst. But two of the big front runners for me right now, Sergeant Johnson, just because of his leader abilities, uh, as well as Pavium. And the big thing with Pavium, too, uh, is he has that mega turret, which is really, really awesome. Uh, that thing does a ton of damage. Uh, I really enjoyed I, I played another round with him. I enjoyed putting it on the closest mini bay slots because that thing can just range, especially once you get your barricades all set and everything's building up. Um, you'll see just how much damage it can do. Um, I do recommend as well, uh, from time to time, maybe throwing in, especially on the three turret slots, you'll kind of see how they break down. But on the three turret slots, it's not a bad idea to provide yourself um, kind of the watchtower-esque uh, tower just because it will give you that extra sight range. And especially if you have some of those siege turrets or some of those long range turrets with the mega turret, um, you'll see that that will be beneficial as well. Um, but again, 13 total achievements out of 15. The only other achievements that we did miss is not taking any damage to the Terminus in uh, the first five waves, and I believe not taking any Terminus damage in the first 15 waves. I think for those, to complete those just off the top of my head, you're still going to have to focus on your production, um, but you, you will need to focus close to build your barricades and your turrets up there. And then also, I do think you'll need to build units pretty quickly for that just so that you can kind of head the enemy off and make it so they don't even get too close uh, because I do believe that achievement will not pop if the spires take any significant amount of damage so that is important to note as well but we'll come up with a strategy for that we'll do another guide for that as well uh, and this is pretty much going to wrap this one up because at this point I get to wave 60 they bring all these condors in I'm actually able to defend this with just what I have and you see I'm spending so much time on just building barricades and turrets that um, you kind of just have to go auto with your units and I have a pretty good hornet force right here that is uh, pretty quickly going to get wiped out when uh, wave 60 comes in but happy for not too long of a playthrough and not too much experience in the Terminus firefight to be able to knock this out um, so I really did enjoy this and we'll continue to do some strategies and some more uh, guides and things like that on this game mode as well so if you haven't already I'll do the shameless plug uh, if you haven't already please make sure to subscribe follow us there's that little bell button if you're not familiar next to the subscribe button that'll let you know when we're uploading a bunch of stuff uh, in addition to this we've got the rocket league update out we've got everything that's going on for destiny as well so stay tuned we're going to be covering all those games uh, and we'll try to do daily uploads as best we can moving forward so uh, doctor and average gamer guys thank you so much for joining me and spending a few minutes of your day hopefully this was helpful for you you're going to see me get the terminus mvp here with 5 million total score almost cracked the 10 million mark so pretty happy with that so hopefully this was helpful if you have any more tips please feel free share those down below love chatting with you in the community and if you've got any specific leaders that you're having success with in terminus firefight specific to solo let me know as well so doc from average gamer guys thanks so much for watching and we'll catch you in the next one